Okay, wonderful. And thank you everyone for this time. My name's Chris, I'm from the grants team at Casey. I just wanna talk about the groups who might be interested in applying for this equipment and training grant. Uh, typically all of our applications come from definitely not-for-profits and organizations who are based in the city of Casey or they service or support residents of the city of Casey. They're our priority for this funding. Most organizations are incorporated or have some type of legal structure be behind them. If not, you might be part of a community group that could engage an auspice and work with an auspice, a big brother organization who is already incorporated and they could help you apply for this grant. And I can answer questions about that later if you have any or you can email them through. Uh, you'll be expected to have public liability insurance uh, with the $20 million minimum value on that. That is a standard across all of our grant applications and our requirements for all of our grants. And when you go through the application form, I'll show you later, but you will be required to attach a current certificate of currency that shows that your public liability is current at that date. And please note, don't attach a tax invoice to the application form. We really need a certificate of currency and that's what it's officially called. If you're not sure that you have one for your organization, give your insurer a call. They'll be able to email it to you quite easily. Um, so let's talk about these grants, equipment and training grants. There's really three main purposes and three things we want um, Casey uh, community groups to benefit from. One, we want these grants to support and develop volunteers and group members. So there's a real emphasis in thinking about the types of training that might really boost your group and provide some skills and some experiences to your volunteers or your group members that's really going to help your group stabilize or even grow over time. We like these grants to help you buy equipment, to do all the things that you need to do to develop, to deliver those great programs and events and things that you do for our community so well. So buying equipment is a really big part of this. Um, and we want you to think about how equipment or training might help you diversify your programs or do something a bit differently or make them more inclusive so that more people can get involved with your group um, or the programs and services that you're going to deliver um, through your group. Um, I did want to talk about what the grants can be used for. They're the three I goals that we're looking for, but these are the types of things that we often get requests for. Um, you, I don't know how many people in the room have applied for a, a grant, an equipment and training grant from us before, but these are the types of typical equipment requests we have or the different types of training that groups come to us um, looking for. So there's leadership courses and coaching, particularly for sports clubs. First aid training is really popular across the board. It's really important um, part of running a community group. Um, and I just have put a link down the bottom from there in case you don't already have an idea about what equipment or training might suit your uh, group and your application this year there's a link there you'll get this in the slides and it'll navigate you to the Casey website it'll just show you what previously funded applicants have been able to purchase with this grant um I think someone's in the lobby lobby just... yeah um, so yeah, lots of ideas, chairs, tables, whiteboards are popular, gardening equipment, particularly if you're in a community garden or running a program like that, uh, all kinds of um, music cooking, for cooking equipment, pots, pans, whatever, what, whatever it is that you need to do what you do best for the community, that's what you can consider through this grant. But there are some items that aren't eligible. So there's some things that this funding cannot be used for. And there's a list here. It's the same list that's in the guidelines. And I want you to really have a look at it and go through it and make sure that this these costs aren't part of your grant request because they won't be able to be funded. So equipment that won't be stored in the city of Casey, we won't be able to fund that through this program. Consumables like paper, uh, stationary masks, uh, first aid kits, so all your band-aids, things like that, they're all considered consumables and you can't apply through this funding round. Items for fundraising purposes, 
gifts for people, prizes or trophies or awards can't be funded. Um, and there's a list there. I won't go through them all. Um, a lot of them are obvious, um, but some aren't. So have a think about what costs you would like us to cover as part of this grant application that you'll be putting in and just make sure that none of these things are in your list. You'll need to be able to think of other ways that your organisation can meet the costs of any of these things that you're looking for. So that might be through fundraising activities or membership fees or contributions or sponsors, business sponsors, that type of thing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Chris. <laughs> no, well, good. You're keen. Over to you. I thought you were about to finish up. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Chris. So how are successful grants decided? Well, they're not decided by Chris and Suzanne and I. No, <laughs> we are just here to facilitate the process, including answering your questions so you can submit the best possible application. Um, we put together a panel of people, uh, including community representatives, to assess each application based on how well it meets one one or more of the following criteria. So that's really important. You don't have to meet all of these criteria. You only have to meet a minimum of one, but you can meet more. So in the form, you will be asked to show, uh, answer this question, how will you meet them, uh, these criteria, but it does only have to be one. Um, so the criteria are, how is it essential that is, how is the training or equipment you're applying for, how is it essential to, to the delivery and or success of your activity program or group? How will it increase the safety participation opportunities in your programs and activities into the future? And will it be well used by the group or help enhance inclusivity and accessibility? Um, Noting that the panel will give priority to equipment that can be retained and used for an extended period of time and to commute computer equipment that supports multiple members in the group. So some tips to answer this question, because this is really important because this is what the panel is assessing your application on. Um, so spell out for us how the equipment will assist your group. Um, it is important for you to show how committee members, group members, coaches, volunteers will use the equipment or which, which kinds of members in your group will use your equipment and how it will be used by multiple people. Be clear about how often the equipment be, will be used. Say for example, gardening tools used weekly by up to 25 community garden members. So you can see that's really succinct. How many people, who's using it? Um, or for example, an iPad used by two administration volunteers for monthly meetings. So just give us that information as succinctly as possible and that will help the panel um, assess your application. How long the equipment is retained for or you plan to retain it for, it might be a month, a year, five years and importantly where it will be stored, for example in the community garden shed to use the example I was talking about before. Be clear about how the training you're seeking will help your community group. So you might know it really well, but it's hard to, you know it so well, you're not telling us well enough. So get someone in your group to read your application. For example, if you're seeking um, help for your community group, it might be to operate or become, to operate in a more sustainable, sustainable way, a safer way, a more inclusive way, who will benefit, for example, diversity and inclusion training would benefit 15 minute members, sorry, of the local footy team, coach and volunteers, all of those people to enhance understanding and respect for all the members in your group. That's just an example. Um, so hopefully there's some application tips for you when you're writing your application. And I'm gonna hand over to the lovely Suzanne. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, what you need to do to support your case 
So the more evidence about what you're seeking your funding for, the better chance your application will be successful. So if you can attach any documentation, for example, some quotes or any training information you may have, um, that will be, again, helping your application. And make sure you test take the time when you're preparing your budget to make sure that you have the budget items that you specify, they match um, any all the information that you have um, answered in your previous questions. So the timelines. So as of yesterday, the applications opened and the online application form is available to complete. And Chris is going to run through this with you at the end of the presentation. Um, Friday, the 4th of October is when the applications close, strictly at 5 p.m. So we don't accept any late applications, unfortunately. Um, so after five o'clock, there will be no online, there'll be no access to the online applications. So if you're in the middle of an um, application, you'll be timed out. So um, yeah, please be mindful of that. And um, once your application goes through to the Smarty Grant system, you'll receive an email acknowledging that we've received your application. Um, but if, yeah, if you're having any problems and you don't receive, if you don't receive that email, I would suggest that you contact us immediately so we can have a look at that. Um, so in October, November, your applications will be checked for eligibility and assessed by the wonderful panel. And then late November, early December, you will be notified of the outcome of your application. A few more things uh, to keep in mind. Um, so these grants are intended as a contribution to items. Um, so it may not cover all the costs. So, so if your costs are more than $1,000, your budget, um, you should in your budget, you should detail how the remaining expenses are going to be covered. So as an example, the plans for fundraising or any other club contributions you um, may have. Uh, your group can only submit one application. You can still apply for um, an equipment and training grant even if you've already applied for another community grant earlier in the year too. And also please remember that the funding is a one-off and competitive and getting more competitive every year. So there is no guarantee of funding um, for this year or, or for future years. Uh, if your application is approved, um, the payment will be deposited directly into your bank account, sorry. Um, and this will be based on the bank banking details that you provide in the application form. And just remember, it's important that you um, just inform the organisation, other committee members about the success of the grant application. And you should only spend the funds on what you have applied for. So please collect any relevant information to equip the, the grants. So you know, hold on to receipts and any other information that you may have um, at the time of purchasing, because this will help you when it comes to acquitting later and you'll be so the acquittal form is completed online and um, a link to this form we will email to you after you receive the payment for the grant. So just a little bit more on acquitting your grant. Um, that, so as I said, those forms are online through the Smarty Grants portal and um, yeah, so with these forms, you will be reporting on the grant monies that you've spent in line with the application that you've submitted. And you need to, um, as I said before, if you can keep any receipts or um, flyers or photos or anything that you can provide us when you're acquitting, um, that'll help uh, acquit the grant on our side. And um, it's just to showing what the funds have been spent on. And the due date will be set for 60 days after you have proposed to spend that money um, or by the 30th of June for 2025, whichever becomes, whichever's earlier. Um, so that is about acquitting. And I am now going to pass it over to Chris to talk about the online 
application form. Thanks, Chris. Amazing. Thank you. I wanted to just do a brief walkthrough of the online application process, which will be hopefully helpful for the people in the room who haven't applied before, um, because we do use an online system called Smarty Grants. We've dropped that name a couple of times. Um, and it is our online database for our grants management. We use it for every grant um, that is community facing. And I wanted to just give you a bit of an introduction so you know what to expect. Now, I'm going to share, you know, when you've got to cross your fingers and toes that this will work <laughs> because tech has a way of not. Oh, and there's someone in the lobby. Um, have you been able to spot my screen? I could get a yes, yes I have one. So I'm looking at the City of Casey website here. Um, and this is where you'll go. Obviously, if you haven't already, please come and have a look at all the information that we have here online. This is all the guidelines and all the rules that we have relating to this application um, and to this funding. Uh, we've covered a lot of that already in this session. Um, but I wanted to point out a couple of things here. One I mentioned earlier, you can have a look. If you follow this link, it'll show you previously successful applicants. Um, so what have we funded in previous rounds of this equipment and training grant? You can have a bit of a look to see if it's something that your idea has been funded before for other groups. And it's just good to know um, what other groups are, um, I guess, investing in and what you might have in common with a whole lot of groups that are applying for this uh, funding round. And here oh, you've probably accessed the registration for the information session because here we are, but this is the way to access the application form and I hope you've been able to have a look at that as well. You should have been able to preview the form. So it'll bring you to a place like this here where we can preview the form. I hope you've been able to click on that. We'll come back to that, but I wanted just to flag that to use our Smarty Grant system, you're going to have to create yourself a login for your organization and a password. And this is the same login and password you can use for every grant that you apply um, for at the city of Casey. So it's really important, two things. One, um, please write down your password and share it with other people in your organization. It's likely that you won't be the only person involved in grants at your organization. It's really important that other people can access it. So make sure you knew, use a password that everyone knows um, or that you've shared. And also when you're use, using an email, maybe when you're creating an account, use a common email that your group uses for other purposes so that multiple people can log in and be up to date with any emails that we're sending um, in relation to any grant applications because that's the email address that we will use for all of our communications to let you know if we need more information for an application to let you know if it's been successful or unsuccessful. So top tip, if you're creating an account here, you'll need to register. It's very simple, um, but use a really common email for your group, not preferably not someone, something that belongs to one person, something that other people can access, and a password as well that you write down and share um, with others in your group. I'm just going to use for the purposes of, of this exercise, just one of our, um, accounts that we've set up here. I just wanted to hopefully give you a bit of a walk through about what to expect. So you might, I just want to show you some of the navigation here. So on the right hand side, there's a form navigation section. It's really useful. Um, we've got, uh, what's that, nine, 10 different pages for this application form, but I promise it's really quite a couple of questions on each page. It's a grant um, that's quite simple to apply for. It's a small amount of money. Um, so we've tried to keep it as simplified for yourselves and for us as possible. But the first page is all around entering organization information. You can navigate using the form navigation on the side or there's next pages down the bottom. Um, you'll be prompted to 
Now you won't be prompted to save. I am asking you to save your progress from time to time. Um, and you can save and close if you just get halfway through, need to go away and come back. It'll still be there sitting in your account. Um, but we will ask lots of questions about who the contact is going to be. That's likely you guys here. Um, you're representing your group. We're going to ask you also to name someone else in your committee who is uh, understands that you're applying and understands the responsibility that that brings. Um, as I mentioned, I'm not going to go through all the form um, questions. On the third form, we talk a lot about your legal status and these are all the uh, tell us your ABN numbers and share your insurance information. Um, if you have an auspice, we can talk about that separately. I'm not sure if that relates to anyone here online, but I'm more than happy to um, talk later if you have questions. You'll need to provide here on page five some information about your organisation. Don't assume that the assessment panel knows anything about what it is that you do. So it's really important. You've got 100 words. Be short and sharp and be really clear about what your organisation does and what types of things and activities you're doing in community. On page six, you're going to be talking very quickly about your grant request. Is it for equipment or is it for training? A very short statement about what it's for, very referring to what Elizabeth mentioned before. It was train, what was it? First aid, no, first aid training for 25 community gardeners, something like that. Um, and here we're going to ask more information about your group and who's going to benefit from this, uh, this investment. Page seven is our budget table. Um, it's really important to put the amount of funding that you're looking for here and if there's multiple items you can list them, itemize them separately on the different rows. So you put uh, if I'm looking for five soccer balls here I will put a dollar value over here of a hundred dollars and then I want two nets and that's going to be three hundred dollars. Um, once you've added in these amounts in dollars, this field here will add up your dollars automatically. So you don't need to worry about adding them up, but you need to understand that they need to add up to $1,000 for the grant amount. So that's the maximum amount that you can get. And if there's other expenses, you can put those here, um, but it, and it'll total up the total expenditure amount. Here you can put supporting documentation and upload any pictures or quotes or um, training schedules that you that you want to reference that you'd like people to review. And an important question down the bottom when we're talking about funding is if the assessment panel decides to recommend part of the funding, could you still go ahead with the training or equipment purchase? So if the assessment panel decides uh, to allocate uh, $500 for the training and not $1,000 that you're requesting, does that mean that you'd still go ahead but maybe half the people wouldn't get trained? Is that okay? And it's totally up to you guys. These are your groups and you know your own needs. We're just looking to find out what is it that you really need. If it can't proceed without thousand dollars. If you'd need all the people trained, you need to tell us here. Um, we will ask for your bank details. Please provide them. And then there's a declaration on the final page just so that you uh, are signing off that the information you've provided is true and correct um, and that your um, understanding the conditions of the grant, the need to acquit the grant at the end of the spending period, um, and you have the option to provide us with permission to share your information, your group's information with other council staff who might be interested in getting contact with you for different opportunities or purposes. Once you've completed everything, you'll go to this review and submit page. Now this one is going to highlight that, as you know, I've not completed any of my boxes because I'm doing this for 
demonstrations purposes. Um, but should you have missed out on anything that's important, it will show you here and you're able to click on here and it will take you back to the important information that you need to go and complete. Once all of the red is gone. Once you've completed everything, there will be a submit button at the end and you'll be able to send through your grant application. I'm wondering if I've missed anything. I can't think of anything, but I'm happy to buzz back into here um, if you've got any questions when we do our Q&A at the end of this session. Um, which I think I'm going to stop sharing, I think is soon I think we've got time for questions. Um, so is now a good time that we turn off the recording and we see if anybody wants to run any questions by us. Oh, I love Janice, you've put your hand up. That is so good. I'll just yes, make... I think we can turn off the recording. Are you able to do 